What's up, everybody? How's it going? Happy Thursday. Let us know if you can hear us, please. Perfect. Somebody said the mic's not working. Can y'all not hear us? I can hear perfect. Great. Good, we hope everybody's doing good today. We are sitting down in these chairs, catching our breath right now for a minute. All of you hopefully have gotten um, an email today from us already announcing that we're getting ready to um, do one clinic, Camwood Clinic at the end of this year. Uh, we've gotten a lot of response already from people filling out those applications. Uh, the biggest key on those clinics, and us being able to do that one in November is going to be obviously um, a facility that has the space for us to do it. Um, we've put a max on a number of kids just because we know the facilities can't hold over a certain number. Um, so we put that max of 50 players ages 10 to 18 years old. Um, we had a question earlier from somebody in the Facebook group that asked if this was only for kids that have not bought the program yet. That is not correct. This is for anybody and everybody that wants to go through the program, has already gone through the program, and wants to better themselves at it, um, that wants to know more about the program as far as just the concepts behind it. Um, this is for people that want to be better at hitting. Um, we, Like we said last week and we mentioned in the email, we have found that the best way for us to see the results that we talk about so often, I mean, the exit below increases, the strength increases, all those kind of things, the best way for us to see that is through the hands-on training. Yep. Um, I mean, there is no better way to get a kid to figure out how his bottom hand should move past the ball than when I can grab them and put my hand on them and show them that it's not just this, yep. it's, it's this. It's direction. the whole part mm -hmm. of that hand connection, the direction in which we drive. Um, and I mean, that's just one little bitty example of, what those clinics are gonna entail. Um, again, we mentioned that everybody that comes to the clinic or that signs up to go to that clinic, wherever we host it at, they will get a brand new hands and speed trainer and one-hander um, as well. And we wouldn't recommend getting the same size unless you're a high school kid that's swinging a 33 and you plan to stay at a 33. Um, other than that, we would recommend going up another size and being prepared to move up later. You wouldn't have to go back on the website to spend that there you would already have that because you got it at the camp. Um, and something else that, I mean, we really want to harp on at these clinics is uh, the importance of kids continuing to do this on their own. Um, I know me and growing up playing, you know, watching I mean, different teammates that I had and things like that. Every, some people went to hitting coaches, some didn't. Um, some people spent more time at hitting coaches than others. Um, but me, I had a hitting coach that kind of taught me things early on very, very similar and along the lines of what we teach here at Camwood. And then I didn't have that hitting coach for a long period of time. All I had was my, my high school coaches, my rec ball coaches, things like that. And all I could do, all I knew to do was that if I wanted to be good at this, if I wanted to play this game a long time, then I had to work at it and I had to get better at it. And so I just took the things that I learned the first few years or first few months, however long it was that I hit with that guy and applied those every single day. Yes. I made sure that every day, if not every day, then I mean, if I missed a day, I got it in the next day. I had to hit off the tee. It was so important to me. And to me, it was detrimental to my game when I didn't, when I didn't do those things. Well, so, yeah. I mean, and go ahead. I mean, coaches can only go so far, guys. I mean, we're going to give you all the knowledge we know and all that kind of stuff, but players got to go home and perfect what we teach. Right. I know. Right, and I know – I mean, there's probably some controversy that folks think that we're coming and the price is more because we're selling the same thing. No, we're not. We're selling – I mean, what we – we do – we're in the trenches. We do this every single day. We deal with kids that want to go through this program and want to be good at this every single day. And we have found that there are ways to help kids understand things that they at one time did not understand. Um, but, again, 
it all goes back to once we teach you those things, which once we show you the proper way of, or the proper feel for how your bottom hand should work to the ball, it is now up to the kid to go home and put that into practice every day yes. to a point to where it's natural for them because otherwise they're just taking reps off a tee yeah. and then they want me to come back and hit with them or they want to come back and hit with me and they want me to polish them up and fix them up. And again, we, we're not in the business of polishing people up because no. we've given you the keys to success. We just need to have a little bit of guidance. We just need a little more sauce to help kids get the results that they want to get. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll pause here for a minute. If you guys have any questions or comments on those clinics, um, go ahead and let us know. Um, again, like we said, we're going to announce where we're doing that clinic on October 25th. We do have a few people that have reached out to us and we're just kind of trying to figure out the best location to do it. Um, so we will be letting you guys know. Age range is going to be 10 to 18 years old. Um, we don't foresee a lot of college kids coming to this yet. Um, it absolutely pertains to college kids yes, because I mean, you could just about see that as you go up in levels, batting averages go down drastically. Yes. Um, and you can put stock on that. I mean, you can say that that's because pitchers are better. You can say, I mean, that's because they're throwing 120 miles an hour, whatever the case is. But again, everything's moving in a straight line, folks. We just got to get in the way. Yep. And that I do adjust, make our adjustments. Yes. yes. People aren't making adjustments. Yes. Um, so age range is going to be 10 to 18 years old. And y'all also let us know about what y'all think about traveling wise. What would be an okay distance to travel for yeah. y'all for these clinics? Because that'll help us also determine where we want to. Well, host I, knew, I mean, I know my location where I grew up, um, you know, right here, that, I mean, there was, I mean, there was a certain distance that we were, we could have traveled to that. Mm -hmm. And then there was a distance where it was like, oh, we need them to come a little closer. So, yeah. um, again, that all kind of plays into it as well. If we have a lot of kids, if we have 30, 40 kids that want to go through the program in a certain area, we'll lock it in. We'll find a place to do it. That is, um, that's always very possible. Uh, there's a couple other questions that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. We don't have any more regarding the clinics that um, are just frequently asked questions, some that we've gotten this week from different customers um, through emails, through Facebook groups, things like that. Um, one question that we had, um, I received in a text message, a guy had sent a video of his kid hitting in a game, a couple videos, and, and asked, um, asked us, you know, what do you see here? I mean, what, is there any improvements he needs to make or anything like that? And so we wa I watched the video and kind of gave my critique. He had a little bit of a problem pulling off. He was making really good contact. He was driving the ball well. But as we see with a lot of kids, young ages, when they learn their lower half and they get really good at their lower half, their upper body tends to go with it. And mm -hmm. so he was kind of in that place where he's pulling off as he rotates his lower half. Um, and so I mentioned it, pointed that out, told him just to be cognizant of that when he's going through his drills. And so he asked, you know, what's a good drill to focus on keeping the front shoulder closed and not pulling off? Um, everything always goes back to the program. Trey has mentioned this numerous times. The program is a blueprint. That program is going to be able to fix any issue that you have when it comes to mechanics. Um, as far as front side pulling off, that's always going to be a hands drill. Um, One-handers, two-handers, and making sure that you keep the body closed. Yeah. Um, we know that a lot of kids have issues with that. We see it when they get to the weight shift drill that they may keep their front side closed on their hands, but when they go to the lower half drills, they start pulling off. We go to a one-hander and make them do that drill with a one-hander mm -hmm. yes. to reiterate that you cannot pull off with your front side. We have to stay closed and let that hand work through the zone and then open us up yeah, yeah. Um, as we come around. Somebody said, we're in Connecticut. Are you planning on setting something up within 60 miles or so? Um, again, we're, wait we're waiting to announce the exact location um if i mean again if we have 50 kids that want to do it in connecticut we can we can work around that 60 miles or so it just really uh, depends on the location of where those people are 
And again, we're going to launch these in January. Starting in January, we're going to plan to do one of these every month in a specific location mm -hmm. across the country. Um, so it's not like this is a one and done deal and you miss out forever. This is um, the one in November is geared towards us making sure we have everything set as far as the schedule, as far as how many kids we can hold and handle if we have to do two groups a day, three groups a day, or whatever the case is, depending on how many kids we have. We want to make sure all those kinks are worked out. So when we start in January, we're running smooth and um, we can do as many as we can get on the books. Yes. Because um, again, the, the whole purpose and plan of this is for us to get to you. Um, we want to get to you. So yes, down the line, we can't tell you exactly when, but yeah, we do. We'd love to set something up within 60 miles connect for sure. For sure. Any other questions that anybody has regarding, excuse me, the program or um, the clinics or anything along those lines? Uh, question here, we have the Camwood Bats, have had them for several years, just purchased the All-American program. And it says to set a baseline, they don't have a radar gun, uh, but we do have a blast motion, diamond kinetic swing trackers. Do you recommend either or both to gauge a starting point? Um, I think it's great to start out. I know that in my facility, I don't actually have my own radar gun. I use radar guns at, spe at specific times. Um, when I want to see where a kid is or want to see where a kid starts. But a lot of the kids in our area are more focused on the mechanic improvement rather than the bat speed yes. um, increase. And I think that that varies depending on your area. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, kids are interested in what's going on around them. Um, but like you say, I mean, diamond kinetics and blast motion, either one of those are, are a good measurement. Um, I know blast motion talks about um, – I'm not sure if it was bats. I think it's bat speed, not necessarily exit velocity. Yeah. Um, but again, those two numbers are very, very close in comparison. So diamond kinetics, blast motion, those are those are good tools to use for sure. Very good. Another thing talking about bat speed, y'all talk about radar guns and stuff like that. The best way to move fast in the swing guys is staying loose. Mm -hmm. If y'all can really push this during the program is especially upper body staying loose, even lower half, really, you want to fill your muscles, yes, but you want to fill everything loose and fast. Yeah. So I just want to reiterate that going through this program to not necessarily think so much. Y'all talk about bat speed. A lot of people go to what's in their hand, the bat, hands, trying to fast and hard mm -hmm. through the zone. No, we want everything to be fast and relaxed. Yeah. And a little bit more compact through the zone and then elongating that when you get through contact. Absolutely. Yeah, so. the looseness, I mean, is really where the bat speed is going to come in. And I know that a lot of kids, I mean, they go through this program because they hear of the results that people have had. I mean, in 10 miles an hour, X and below increases. And yes, that is so true that that's happening. But again, I mean, it varies between kids, but it also depends on how loose the kid is. Um, how smooth they are with their drills, yep. the path at which that bat is going through the zone. And I think that sometimes players can get a little bit distracted and some parents too can get a little bit distracted when they, when everything starts geared towards bat speed, X velocity, X velocity, because all of those things, those are, that is a result that comes from how you perform the swing. I mean, having a 92 mile an hour exit velocity is a result of how well you did some things in the swing how well you drove your knee, your hip, your hands, how loose were you when you went through the zone? Yes. Were you tight? Were you tensed up? Were you forcing the barrel? I mean, all of those things play into X velocity. Um, so, I mean, think about that. I do like the fact that parents are, I mean, are interested in that. Yeah. They want their kids to have a high X velocity. Um, but let's just remember, I mean, where that starts. That starts with the mechanics. The gauging makes, I mean, it's great to get a number to see where they are. Because y'all are, I mean, y'all have provided our stats. Y'all are the reason that we can say 10 miles an hour exit velocity increase in 30 days from yes. using a Camwood bat. I mean, it's because of you guys. Um, so, again, yeah, keep doing things like that. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you put the emphasis in the right place. 
the, uh, the bat speed increases, exit velocity is all going to come um, if those mechanics are good and they're loose as they're going through that yes. swing. Any other questions that we've got right now? Another question though we've seen on emails I just want to point out is um, about a 30 day program. Some people are hesitant about getting it now and doing it later yeah. because they think the time frame is going to run out on that. Y'all do not have to worry about that. Once y'all purchase the 30 day program and have it, you'll have it forever. It's all access. Yeah. yeah. So it's even unlimited. if you buy it now, don't start it about two or three months later, you're going to still have that access. And if you can't find the code, you can always email us at support, text us, call us. We can still send you that link. Yeah. Just make sure you have the order number and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, kind of continuing on, that brought up another point that I thought about earlier. Um, again, y'all heard us mention in the, in the video for the clinics, we were talking about, I mean, how much of an asset the Facebook groups have been to us and to you guys for you to post videos and ask questions, things like that. Um, don't forget that we have upgraded the program to have the hotline inside of the program where you can go in, find the text number, um, and basically text those videos and questions to that number. It is so much faster and more easier for us to get to it right off the bat. If you send a specific video and a specific question to that number, well, we can look at it, answer it, and shoot it right back to you rather than us scrolling through 58 yeah. um, Facebook posts trying to find the exact question, find out where it is. Um, a lot of people post in the Facebook groups. One of the main things that gets said is any suggestions. Um, suggestions, I'm, I'm a big person of taking suggestions with a grain of salt. Um, pay attention to who it's coming from. Yes. Um, again, that's one reason we added the text hotline. So you guys could get straight to us. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook group, it allows so many people to respond and not that everybody is wrong or not that somebody's rude or whatever the case is. Yeah. But I mean, we do this every day. Um, we are certified to do this and teach this program. So if you want to know what we think, utilize the text hotline and reach out to us on there. Um, there, I'm sure that there are a handful of people that would attest the text hotline has been just as beneficial, if not more, than that pro, uh, than the Facebook group at times. So be sure to utilize that as well. Um, let me ask this question to you guys, so just to kind of get some responses here. Are there any videos um, that you would like to see or that would be helpful for us to do in regards to how we teach something in the program. Um, for whatever case, I mean, your kid's having an issue with this or with this drill or with this whatever. Yeah, something to elaborate on or something like that. Do you want to know what we would do or how we would do it? We would actually like to start making these Facebook groups a little more helpful as to, as a place where folks can go find those videos mm -hmm. and they're answered right off the bat, yes. whether rather than, than have, have them having to post eight or nine videos and then ask a question along yeah. with it. Very good. Everybody's got it. How do you get them to relax during game situations? It seems that most kids um, have two different swings. Yep, the relaxed practice swing and the game swing, which seems to be a lot more tense. We have dealt with this so much as well. Um, I have a specific player in mind right now, a softball player, that if you watch yeah. her, if you watch her hit off the tee, um, she would blow your mind. Uh, she's one of the best hitters, has one of the most beautiful swings that I've seen. Um, but when she gets in a game, it's like you say, it, she thinks something just changes. And it's not – that's not a mechanics issue. That is not a lack of preparation issue. That is a mental deal. Yeah. Um, it is a mental battle that the kid is fighting, and it is going to take some time for them to break through that. Something that we had to start doing when we ran into that issue is um, throwing front toss to the girl. We don't have any L screens in here. I mean, we're – super big on T-work, but we have ways to throw front toss when we need to. So we would throw front toss to her. Um, and the first, I remember the first day we did that, 
watching her swing, I mean, we had just finished tee drills. And then from one, from the last tee swing to the first thrown ball, it was night and day yeah. difference. And it's when the ball starts moving, kids start getting antsy. They start getting nervous. They get, yeah. I mean, they freak out. And the only way to get past that is to put the ball in motion, yeah. stand in the cage and throw the ball to them, overhand, underhand, whatever, throw the ball to them and let them swing. Um, something we had to do was 10 or 15 pitches. She didn't even swing. Yep, tracking the ball, letting it travel. This is going into that patience. They get real jumpy yeah. when the ball gets in motion, so everything gets rushed. And I'll, I'll kind of stand up and show yeah. that, I mean, we would we throw the pitch and we had them finish right here. And you can see how the only thing that moves or that attempts to fire is my knee in that swing. So I want them to feel this first. We'll take 10, 15 pitches where they just stand there and take it just like it's a ball right there. Yeah. Because what needs to happen in games, um, a, a player should always trigger at a pitch that's close to the zone. Yes. Ball, strike, they should always trigger. Because in their head, they should be telling themselves, it's a fastball for a strike, and I'm going to be swinging. Otherwise, you're late. You're beat. So I always get them used to triggering to take. Yeah. We're preparing ourselves that if I were to swing at that pitch, my lower half would be ready. Mm -hmm. My I would start from the right place and everything would move in the right direction. Yeah, but reemphasizing <laughs> the trigger, where the trigger's supposed to be. The trigger's not supposed to be in our hands, guys. Yes, we we focus hands directionally, but the triggers are at lower half. So if we can program the kids to rely on my lower half. By taking those pitches, I run out of the problem of striking out by check swinging and all that other stuff. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll go into that because this, this was – I'll be honest with you guys. I mean, my senior year of college, I struck out 52 times. Um, I also led the team in batting average, led the team in home run. So, that tells you when I put the ball in play, it was scorched. But what happened was when I got two strike counts, I, I started my swing with my hands. I didn't have any weight shift. I hadn't learned about weight shift yet. So, what would happen – as I'm trying to recognize ball or strike, my hands are already going. So when I decide, oh, that pitch is too low, now my hand, I can't stop them. And I've told kids, and this has been such a light bulb to me, uh, this would have completely changed my game. If we can learn to trigger from the lower half, starting at the knee, whenever that pitch is coming to me, and I load, here comes the pitch, I load, stride, and trigger at the knee, then this is going to give me time to decide if that pitch is going to continue to be a strike yeah. or if it's going to fall out of the zone, run off the plate, run inside and hit me. I mean, you see a lot of folks that get hit. Yeah. I mean, with a 97 mile an hour two seamer in their chest because their hands have already fired. Yeah. That's because they don't know how to use their lower half. Mm -hmm. If we'll trigger with that lower half, then I get to this point, and now if I decide, oh, no, that's a ball, my hands have not even started on a path forward. Yeah. So the best way – I mean, we kind of got on a tangent there. Yeah. But going back to that question, the best way to get your kid from their tee swing and get that swing into the games is to start putting the ball in motion. Front toss, soft toss, BP, and start out – I mean – Every time you do that, 10 or 15, 20 swings, if it takes a whole bucket, do a whole bucket. We want to learn how to just hold the bat here and start and trigger with that knee and hip first. Boom. And then we take. We relax. Next pitch. We load and we take. We load and then we take. And then you get in your swing. Yeah. You let it go. We drive that knee and hip, and then our hands go through. And we finish back here. You've got to make kids feel it. I mean, a lot, a lot yeah. before it's going to transfer into those games. So I, I hope that answered the question there. Um, if it didn't, let me know what I need to say to answer. Any other questions? That one's very good. That's a good topic too. That's one that we get on a lot in here, um, and it's it's very relevant with kids. Kids check, swing, and miss all the time.
Very good. Okay, yeah. we can do one on that for sure. We'll do a video on that one. Um, I think that may, that's, that's such a good point that, that will register with a lot of players because I, th I think players find themselves in times like that yeah. um, when they're struggling, especially. When they're struggling, I mean, they don't want to trust things. Yes. And so they go to the first thing that's going to make contact, and that's here. Mm -hmm. They don't – they can't trust that everything will catch up. Yeah. Um, and that's that's why kids struggle so much when they go from the tee into front toss and into games. And I think – okay. Go ahead. Uh, I think another thing, though, the odds start realizing, too, taking video of game swings and stuff, you'll see this. I see this a lot is making sure they keep their eyes on the ball through contact. Yeah. A lot of kids get to where they're about to make contact with them, that head flies up and see where it's going. They want to see okay. it go where yeah. they want it to go. I would spend some good time in that transition from T-work to live pitching by just letting them watch the ball travel with their eyes. Yeah. I say loosely a lot because a lot of kids want to watch the ball on the tee and get a stiff neck, neck mm -hmm. and it goes all the way to my shoulders. No, I want to be able to move my head and my body underneath nice and easy and keep my head on the ball, keep my yeah. eyes on the ball. I think this will help a lot with kids registering pitches and having more confidence in that swing that we've been preparing for because they know regardless of anything, they're going to see it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, we'll get one. Uh, this is there a video on loading, not wrapping? Um, no, but we can make one. We'll talk about that too. We see this a lot. Um, we actually we're going to hit with a kid today that um, that do, that does this. Yes, a lot of kids. I mean, when they get into the lower half drills, number one, they do not know how to load underneath their body. They load up top. They load with their hands. They go here. And I've I've done a video on this earlier. I mean, months ago. Um, I'm a huge. I don't, this could get controversial. I don't like nod to the catcher. Okay. I, I'm not a big fan of nod to the catcher. And I'll tell you why. We're moving in a straight line. Ball's coming from this direction to my bat. If I take the bat away from the ball, I may have got a little more power, whatever. Okay. But I, there is no way that I'm fixing to get this bat all the way back around here and catch up in time. Mm -hmm. There's no way that's happening. Um, I need to keep my hands right here. And I need to learn how to load in my – Lower half, you really can't see a lot of movement. I mean, you really can't tell that I'm doing much. I mean, it just looks like I'm almost squatting down or just, I mean, rhythm or whatever. Yeah. But it's in the hip right here, trying to coil that hip and get it into a position where I can fire my knee and hip to the ball. Now my upper body is still in a straight line to where I'm trying to hit. Yeah. Otherwise, if I would have done this, okay, well, now, I mean, now when I fire my knee and hit, now look where my knob is. How in the world I'm going this direction? You got and that's what happens when folks start loading up here. We can do a video on that, too. Well, I also want to point out that this whole program is based on being quick, correct? Right. It's not based on being, like, super powerful and hard. We're trying to be quick and fast to create that power, mm -hmm. okay? So people talk about loading. They get they try to get too big and long when they're yeah. loading. We don't want it to be big and long. It does. It takes a split second to get my weight to my backside and ready to fire. And and I'll point out here too. If y'all go watch videos of Trey, we'll and we'll have to go back and post some um, just to get them back out there so people can see them. But I mean, his college swings, he had zero. I mean, he had no strike. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't a guy that had a big leg kick. Folks think you have to have this big leg kick to get your weight back. All you got to do is pick your heel up and your weight's on your back foot. Well, a lot I mean, of kids try to do this based on timing. Right. They try to create this big load based on timing because it's a slower pitcher mm -hmm. or they just having trouble waiting on the ball. Okay. Kids got to start trying to make adjustments now. You can't be sitting here trying to create bad habits to try to make better contact. We got yes. We got to implement the right thing and these kids and, try, and that tracking the ball and all that going into it is going to help. I feel like well, it goes. It's, it, yeah, for sure. Um, and it's going back. It's to me, it's going back to the basics. I mean, mm -hmm. at a whole, a whole nother level. Um, I mean, we're involving the eyes. We're talking about seeing the ball, tracking the ball all the way to the catcher. Um, that's the number one thing you have to be able to do 
if you want to hit is see it. If you can't see, if my head's jumping out of the zone as I'm as my bat's trying to go through there and make contact, I'm not. I'm my bat's going with me. It's going out of the zone with me. Um, so again, the load and all that kind of stuff. Less is so much more. Yeah. Um, I tell kids that all the time. The less you can do. Um, we have a lot of kids that come in here and they have this. There, they have a load that looks like this. It takes them back over their back foot, shifting their weight back. It's not a shift no. in my weight. I just want to feel my, I mean, if I pick my left, if I stand here and pick my left foot up, I feel all my weight on my right foot. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Bring that out here. If I pick it up, I can feel all my weight in my right foot. Um, I don't need to do much or shift anything back to feel it there. Brian put this chair here, something else that we do with kids that are having trouble figuring out basically how to feel their legs in, the, in those lower half drills is we'll put them on a chair right here. And some of y'all have seen things similar to this. We put them right up on the edge, feet underneath them in a hitter stance. And then we have them stand up through their feet to here. A lot of kids get up here and they want to do these drills like this with straight legs. And they're trying to feel their lower half. They're trying to load and they can't even feel it. The only thing they can feel is their hands. One way that you can make kids load with the lower half is to put them in their legs. So we put them in this chair and we just tell them to stand up and load. Boom. Right there. Just nice and easy. Stand up. Boom. And we're, it's just a balance of my weight. I'm, I'm making that weight go from 50 50 to more of a 60 40, whatever you want to break it down into, so that I can fire that momentum back here into the ball. And going off the weight distribution of what Jonathan said, I want y'all to think that I do not want to see my kids' weight get over the top of that leg or behind it. I want to always feel that weight here, but on the inside of my leg. Yeah. Okay. Because anytime we're getting too far on it, I can't get off it now. Yeah. If I'm really just falling back further, you're probably going to create that path up through the ball. And, and what's going to happen, I mean, and you can tell this by the result, kids will beat the tee up, they'll yeah. start bang, banging the tee, boom, 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 boom. It's because their weight is stuck. And the only way for their weight, the only way for the bat, only place for the bat to go when it's stuck, if you turn, is down. It's real, real hard to keep that bat up. Yeah. If you get that weight over that backside and turn too soon. So we'll do a video on that one as well. Any other um, questions or concerns about issues that you're seeing in the program or with your kids in their swing in general? Load was always a big thing for me too. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling y'all, this program is, is life changing. It's life changing. Kids can understand the concepts that this is really talking about. And a place to really focus on load, I say it's a really good tempo drill is the weight shift. Okay, guys, because this is our first yeah. leg drill. This is when we kind of go into that kind of stuff, putting it together. So y'all really need to focus on my load and the weight shift and tempo. I mean, I talked a little bit about tempo last week and just making sure everything's firing in order and have a good tempo to it. Okay. Well, tempo is, I mean, I don't think that you have to be an athlete to play baseball or softball. I think that you have to work and get really good at these drills yeah. to a point where it becomes your natural swing. But again, you have to have some rhythm. You have to have some looseness. I mean, you see hitters, you never see people. Well, I saw one last night, a major league player, he struck out. Uh, but he, he was standing up there, he hit like this. He looked like a kid that was, I mean, that had never played, and he was standing here like this. I mean, how stiff and tight, how are you going to be able to let that bat whip through the zone if you're choking the life out of it, standing up here like this? Um, so we've got to uh, start getting these little bitty keys into the players' minds so that they can start seeing these results a little bit better. If you ever use that chair drill to have them stand, load, and hit off the tee, or is it – or is that not recommended? I mean, we, we'll do the weight shift drill with the chair. Yeah. I mean, I can do it. I'll try to do it. Um, we can do it this way. They want to see it from this one. Okay. Okay. Okay.
takes a little bit to kind of make sure your feet are where they're supposed to be. And that's something too, if you're gonna do this drill, and this is gonna get me off on a tangent, but I'll be careful. If you're gonna do this drill, you have to make sure that your positioning is very good. Otherwise, when you stand up, you're putting yourself, you're, you're putting yourself in a bad position, and now you're trying to do something that's almost nearly impossible. So make sure that the chair is good enough distance. Figure out where you are so that you're in a good enough spot to start the swing. And then we just kind of go through like we were talking about. Have my weight stuck back a little bit. But we just ease them up to the top. And right before they, they break that tension, we'll freeze them, fill them to load. Load. And then we drive that in. And then, and then going back to tempo, guys, because I want y'all to see how that looked. Nothing was rushed. He let his body get to that point, load, and then drive. You can't be getting into this and rushing through. You're going to see your body start to get from here to back to the front side. Yeah. And my hand's just going through. My knee never going. So, um, I'll really give you an example. Game. I know we're playoff baseball right now. Um, a great example of being loose. Um, letting things happen freely. Go watch Trey Turner hit. That man can hit. Um, he's extremely loose. I mean, he's somebody that I uh, thinking back into my my playing days. I would watch and try to idolize him in a sense. Um, I would try to have my hands that relaxed, that comfortable, because when he drives, it's like I mean, the bat is just it's a whip and it follows him wherever he goes, outside, middle, in. I think it was last night he hit a home run um, to left center. I didn't necessarily see where it went. I just saw the replay. Um, but, I mean, that comes from being loose. Any other questions, guys? We're getting kind of close to wrapping it up here for this week. And if you all want to see, uh, we have a picture image uh, about the placement of tea and pudding and everything. If y'all, if any of y'all want that, y'all just email us or text us and we can get that to y'all. It's somewhere in the Facebook group too. Yeah. Uh, if you can't find it, reach out to us on there. We'll yeah. send it to you. It's also, I think, posted on our Instagram. Um, so go check that out as well. And just a, a little reminder, if I mean, I say a reminder, if there's anybody in your area, any facilities in your area now, that would be interested in letting us use their facility to host some kids for that camp. Let us know. Um, have them go to send them the email, let them fill out the information so that they're getting put in contact with us. Um, tomorrow, I'll start going through and reaching out to folks that have already emailed us and put their information in. And we'll be ready to announce that date, or excuse me, that location for the clinic and the date on October 25th. Um, I believe that is a I believe that's a Monday. I may be wrong. Maybe a Wednesday. But either way, the T position would be very helpful. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. I mean, this is this is what we do. We we love we live for Thursdays. Thursdays are the bomb. Yeah. Um that this is basically you're getting a taste of what clinics are gonna be like. I mean, yes. this is this is what it is. State tournament starts today for my boys' high school team. Awesome. I appreciate you guys. There's no telling how many hundreds of hours. Keep putting hours on them, dudes. Yeah. Keep putting them on there. I mean, we've got bats in here that are, I mean, beat to smithereens. They ain't broke, but they're beat. Yeah. Um, but we we got to keep using them. That's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is that we make sure we keep doing what got us to that point. Yeah. One more minute. Any other questions? How many folks do we have in the south east portion of the country? Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee. May not be nobody on here. Nobody on here. Midwest here, Georgia. Huh? Where at in the Midwest? I'm a deer hunter. The Midwest gets me fired up.
And those who are in Georgia, we have a facility down here in Thomasville, South Georgia, uh, close to Tallahassee and Valdosta. If you're ever close to that area, come see us at Swing Shop. Yeah, reach out to us, Oklahoma. Perfect. Yeah. Good deal. All right, guys, we appreciate y'all joining in with us. We appreciate y'all um, letting us take up some of your time. And last week we had a few issues with the screen recording deal. This week I believe that we've got it taken care of. So this video will be posted. Um, look for it tomorrow on YouTube. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week right here in the swing shop from Canwood Bats. Y'all have a good one. Yep.